Hey y'all, what's up? This is Jesse Bose in the 19th hole. I'm here to do the pro expert uh, walkthrough guide. Uh, it's been a long day, been at Memphis all day, had a great time at the zoo and got home and I'm trying to get this guide out for y'all because I will be busy all day tomorrow um, working at the local pumpkin patch. So let's, uh, let's get to it. Let's talk a little bit about holes one through nine uh, from the second tee and what you all can expect on the, uh, the pro and the expert. So of course we have Hole number one, which is right here. Uh, hole number one is a par four. Um, this is a hole that we've seen before. And we all should know how to play this one. Um, you want to play this one. I like to use a kingmaker ball on this one. Um, I like to play with the, uh, the shot right here. Uh, where you come from the tee with a little bit of curl. You hit right there, you aim that ball guy just over the edge of the bunker, and you land right there with four to five bars of backspin, full left spin, and maybe a little bit of curl depending on what kind of wind you have. Hopefully, you can get that ball to land on that fairway on the other side of the bunker and roll it to the green just like that. That's the way I like to play this hole. I like to do it with the Thor. Um, you can use an extra mile. You can use an apocalypse. You can use any of those three clubs. They all work. Um, I would definitely recommend the Kingmaker ball, though, for that shot. Uh, do keep in mind there is, um, oops, there is a plus twenty percent adjustment for the wind as well. So definitely keep that in mind uh, for this shot. Uh, now there is one other way you can play this shot. You can play the rough bump shot right here. Oh, you're laying it somewhere in there, roll into the hole that way. Um, to me. That's a little bit more of a shot that has more uh, unknown variables into it. Uh, you kind of have a, a slope in the rough that slopes from right to left. So you got to make sure you put right spin on that shot. And usually, you know, a couple bars of top spin to make sure you get the ball out of the rough. Because uh, you definitely don't want to get stuck in that rough. I have seen people take that shot when the ball sticks kind of in that rough like Vel Velcro. So you want to make sure you have uh, some top spin to move that ball out of the rough if you do plan to go that way. I would definitely recommend going to the right side. Uh, if you have some sort of a, um, a headwind, you know, maybe you maybe don't try for the, the fancy dancy shot of putting it on the green. Maybe just work about get, work on trying to get it into this zone right here for an easier just chip to the hole uh, from that location. You do want the backspin because you do want to make sure you don't go through the green and into the rough back here. That will make for a second shot uh, out of the rough that you just don't want to have to deal with um, when you're under that kind of a pressure. Um, so, you know, I said the curl depends on the wind. If you have a right to left wind, you don't need a whole lot of curl. But if you have a left to right wind, you will need more curl. Uh, so in that situation, you may want to think about taking a driver with a little bit more curl. So uh, that's hole number one. Let's move on here to hole number two. And a hole number two is a par three. So basically on this par three, this is a brand new par three. I would definitely recommend going with either a Kingmaker ball or a Katana ball. Um, and for the pro expert, you're going to be looking at using either your sniper or your guardian. If you go with a guardian, you can take your shot more directly to the green, I think, or maybe the edge of the green with a lot of backspin. Um, but if you want to play a sniper shot, you can play the sniper shot where you'll be bouncing it off the um, that little fairway island right there. Uh, or you could try to play a rough bump where you try to bounce it off the rough right there. Uh, that rough bump is going to be a fairly difficult shot unless you can master it. The rough in that area does kind of slope severely from right to left back down towards the water. So with that shot right there, you're going to have to kind of figure out the, the correct amount of top spin and right spin. Maybe a little bit of right curl to get that ball moving in a motion back towards the hole. Um, playing the shot off this island is probably going to be the best bet for this hole. Um, and the way you're going to play that, in my opinion, would be with your wood, probably your sniper, about two to three bars of backspin on that shot. Uh, and then also you might need a little bit of curl on that shot as well, depending on the wind. Uh, you just have to wait and see. As far as side spin goes, I would definitely play that one by ear. Uh, you know, you want to try to bounce it as good as you can towards the hole. Uh, one common thing theme that you will notice about these new holes and new greens are they're all very bumpy 
um, and a lot of elevation changes going on. And they're not really straight and flat. So it's definitely going to be tougher to roll that shot up to the hole. Uh, this is probably one of the more flatter greens that you will see of the new holes. So definitely you have a chance. Uh, all, the, all the par threes definitely have a chance for the ace. Just got to figure out which way works best for you when you're playing this hole. Um, so if you are going to play the rough bump, I would say probably go with um, the sniper for sure because you want that extra ball guide. And you're going to probably be playing that shot with somewhere around 0 to 1 bars of backspin. Okay. So good luck to you all in figuring that one out, figuring out which way you like to play. New holes, you never know. Things may change by midweek. Uh, you know, someone may find a better way to play this hole. And you just got to be ready and you got to be willing to make that change if it so comes up, you know, if it's a better opportunity to maybe go after the ace. All right, hole number three. We got here. And hole number three is a par five. And this is not a new hole. This is an old hole, um, you know, with a new skin. Uh, I really like the way they've done this hole. I really like the way they did all these holes with the look. Um, I think they did a great job as far as the way these holes look. And we'll have to wait and see how they turn out in the tournament, what kind of scores we see. Probably going to be a lot of low scores in a good way, uh, if I had to guess. All right, so hole three, we're playing this one with a 10% um, plus adjustment off the tee. So remember that right there. Um, as far as your um, drive goes, you can go with any of your drivers, uh, Thor, Kingmaker, uh, Apocalypse, anything like that. What you're trying to do is you're trying to bounce the ball in this area right here. And you're trying to get your ball up into this zone right here. So you'll skip over, bounce right here, hopefully roll up into that zone or somewhere near that zone. Um, you know, possibly if you hit the rough, you could end up back here a little bit here. I call that the uh-oh zone, um, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, so I would say for your ball, Titan or Kingmaker. I'm more of a Kingmaker kind of guy uh, in you know in the tournament, but if you do uh, have a, like a tailwind and you want a little bit more wind for your shot, definitely go with the Titan ball. If you have you know too much power, you want to cut down on the wind a little bit. If you have a tailwind, go with the Kingmaker. So always remember that the Titan will increase your wind, the Kingmaker will lessen your wind, okay? Um, so let's see here, Sniper or Guardian? Those are your options for your second shot. I like the Sniper, but the Guardian is a very good option as well. I used the, the, uh, the Guardian the other day during friendlies. Uh, if you're going with the Guardian, you're going to be landing your shot more at the green with full backspin and left spin. Try and aim that ball just to the right side of that cup trying to get that nice bounce into the hole. But if you're going with the sniper, which I recommend for this hole, um, I would definitely go with a shot where you're taking your shot from here, landing it somewhere in here with backspin and left spin. And you want to use that ball guide to try to just aim that shot straight to the hole. Use the, use the slope of the green naturally to feed that ball into the hole from the right to the left. And I like to aim somewhere to the right side of that pin and let that ball just roll into the hole nice and neatly. Um, definitely have a chance at the albatross for sure. So back to the uh-oh zone. If you're back here in the uh-oh zone, maybe your drive was short. Maybe it hit the rough and just bounced up onto the fairway. Uh, you may still have a chance to land where you know that good landing zone is on the other side of the rough. But there's a possibility you may have to actually land your shot right about in here and bounce it over the rough and try to roll it up to the green. In that case, you're probably gonna have to use a good amount of top spin and left spin to try to guide that ball towards the hole. Make sure to use the slope of that green to your favor if you have to take that shot. Um, what this all this over here is for, I really don't know. I guess it's just to look, to look pretty. But uh, in my opinion, that's really the hole. This part of the hole is really not even there, in my opinion. So just pay attention to the right-hand side of this hole. All right, moving on. We got hole number four, and this is a par four. This is uh, a newer hole for the course. I would definitely say going with the Kingmaker 
uh, or a Titan ball. Once again, depending on what kind of shot you want to take, you may want to change balls. If you have a tailwind and you're going to go for the risky shot, you may want to go with a Titan ball or even a little bit more uh, of a higher, maybe a specialty power ball. Um, but if you have a tailwind, you're just trying to play for the basic safe shot to set yourself up for a good chance of the eagle. May go, maybe go with the kingmaker. So um, talking about such, I would definitely say make sure to bring, um, as far as long iron goes, bring the Saturn, bring the Thorn. You want clubs with a lot of backspin. This is one of those greens that's very lumpy. Um, you're definitely looking at maybe either a dunk or a, a full backspin shot to this hole uh, for the eagle attempt. Um, your, your two options are basically landing your shot here. And this shot would be done with full full top spin pretty much. And you want to bounce there over to here. And you want to get up into this upper zone. Uh, there's that red line again. If you're uh, behind that red line, you may have interference from this tree right here. If you're past it, you should have a clear shot to the green. So that is important to make sure to get past that, uh, that tree if uh, you are going to go that way. And that would be in the thorn and um, Saturn backspin type shot. Now, the, uh, the other option that you have is actually taking a driver, and you're probably going to have to do this with a, a high power ball. Probably at least level four, level five power ball. Maybe one of those dead ball, one of those um, those ghost balls you bought in the last tournament. So what we're looking at, we're looking at a landing zone right in here, okay? Possibly, no, probably right in here. Um, and basically, what we're doing is we're trying to take our shot to here, and then right over here, land it in this uh, rough, roll it up onto the green. Um, as far as the adjustments go for that shot, it's kind of sketchy. It really depends on the kind of look that you have. Uh, it really is going to depend on the type of wind that we have in the tournament for that shot. If we have a straight tailwind, definitely going to have a good chance of that shot. Probably looking at some backspin on that shot and right spin to kind of feed that ball towards the hole. But definitely a good chance because uh, keep in mind you got all of this fairway area over here to, um, to play with. But you do have a very short... Uh, edge of the uh, the green where you, you go from green to fairway to rough. So definitely keep that in mind. Although any shot out of the rough right over there for a second shot would be a very good chance at the eagle uh, with the accuracy on the, uh, the rough irons that we possess in these pro and expert type of rounds. So basically that's, uh, that's what you're looking at for hole number four. Um, definitely a lot of good options, but uh, yeah. If we do have some sort of a crazy headwind and we have to play it up short, you may want to bring your uh, your guardian club just in case because you may want to use that club to go straight to the green with a lot of backspin. So definitely that should be interesting. That is if we have to lay it up into like this zone right here. You know, maybe we have to bounce it over like that, you know, depending on if we have like a really severe headwind, which I doubt we'll have. We usually get some pretty uh, consistent tailwinds for these tournaments. Uh, but yeah, if you do have to take that safe shot, you definitely want the Guardian for that full backspin shot straight to the green. All right, we got hole number five now is next, and it's a par three. And it's uh, it's an old hole, a new skin. Uh, so definitely one that we're used to. Uh, we're looking at the plus 20% on the adjustment right here off the tee box. Um, I would say Katana Ball, Kingmaker. Uh, we want a ball that cuts down on the wind and has a lot of side spin to it, basically. Um, as far as playing this hole in the Pro Expert, you're looking at using probably a driver, uh, unless we get a straight tailwind that you can possibly use a wood. Uh, I would assume we'll get some sort of a side wind or a headwind on this hole, so the driver will probably be it. Um, quarterback, Thor, or Rocket. So what's the uh, what's the common denominator on those three clubs? Backspin. That's right, backspin. Uh, so if we're playing with the wood, we're going to be laying our shot in this zone right here. Uh, you want to take a wood shot at max distance. You want to use a good amount of backspin, probably four to five bars of backspin. You want to aim the edge of that ball guy just over the edge of that fringe onto the green towards the hole. Okay. But if you're going to use um, a driver, you're going to be using right spin, 
You also use right spin with the wood as well. Uh, for the driver though, you would use back spin, right spin. You're gonna aim that shot up a lot closer to the green, a lot closer to the green on that shot. Uh, because we have a lot more backspin available to us with those um, driver clubs. So basically what you're going to be doing is going to be a very short condensed ball guide. Um, you want to aim that, that ball guide a little bit to the left side of the hole and let that wind kind of bring it or that curl bring it back to the hole, possibly giving you a chance at that ace. Um, but you do want to keep in mind that that fairway does slope back down the green that way and it slopes back down towards the hole that way. So keep in mind that on the shot. Uh, the back side of the green slopes away from the hole. Uh, the left side of the green, it slopes kind of toward and back behind the hole. So all that backspin is definitely necessary for that shot to the hole. Okay. Uh, we've all played this hole before. We all kind of basically know the, the general fundamentals of how to play it. So I, think, uh, I don't think I really need to go into much more depth on that hole. Uh, hole number six. This is a par five, and this is another hole that we've seen before. Um, they did add some bushes in front of the green. Don't worry, they don't they don't stop the ball. There's they they do nothing except sit there and and act as different visuals in the hole. They don't affect the ball at all. So hole number six, uh, plus ten percent adjustment off the tee. Uh, if you're going to play this shot to the right, I would go with the Thor. Um, you're laying it in this zone right here. And I keep doing this. We're going to roll it up to this zone right there. Okay. Um, if you have a, a tailwind, you want to make sure you don't use too much topspin. Four bars of topspin is fine. Full left spin is good. Left curl, perfect. Uh, if you have a headwind, you can use full topspin and full left spin and you'll be okay. But if you have a tailwind, make sure you don't overdo the top spin if you're using like an apocalypse or maybe a higher level Thor or something. Uh, four bars of top spin will do just fine. Um, and that's to play it to the right side. If you're gonna play it to the left side, um, I would definitely recommend using a higher power ball because you're gonna be bouncing it in this zone right here, probably with some overpower. And hopefully you're gonna be over the water, bouncing it right about there and getting up into somewhere in that fairway area right there. So here is where you kind of got to change your, your clubs depending on which way you want to play. If you're going to play it to the left, you want to take some uh, irons that have backspin. Uh, if you can play it to the right, I would definitely recommend the sniper. So if you're playing your shot to the right with the sniper, you're going to be taking your shot over all of this, landing it in this area right here, bouncing it over and through the bushes, landing it right there in that little fairway area right there in front of the green, and hopefully rolling it up to the green for a possible albatross. So, if you are playing that shot to the right with the sniper, you have a tailwind, you wanna use some backspin, about one bar of backspin. If you're playing that shot to the right and you have a headwind, you wanna use some topspin, somewhere about a half to one bar topspin. If you're playing that shot to the right and you have a sidewind, you probably don't need to use much spin at all, um, top or back. So just go with, you know, just go no bars, if you feel like you need to make an adjustment to that after you tried it out, then go with the, the adjustment, whatever way you feel helps your chances best to get in the albatross. Now here's the difference. If you're gonna play it to the left side, um, you know, depending on how far you get up the fairway, you may be able to go straight over all this rough and land it in here with a lot of backspin, or you may be able to have to skip your shot uh, over the rough, just like you do to the right side. Um, so depending on the which way you play and what shot you have to take, uh, you may wanna use a little bit more backspin if you're going all the way over the rough or not as much backspin if you're doing the skip shot over the rough. So definitely keep that in mind if you're gonna play it that way. Um, so it just depends on how well you hit that drive up the left-hand side. I personally play the right side and I like to play the sniper for the second shot. You usually get a fairly decent tailwind for that second shot and uh, the last few times we've played it, it's been a fairly straight tailwind playing from that right side. So definitely check that out, and we'll see what kind of wins we get in the tournament. All right, a lot of talking going on, a lot of talking. Hopefully y'all are getting some good information here. Uh, hole number seven. And hole number seven is a par four. Um, this is one of the brand new holes. 
I would definitely recommend going with the Kingmaker or um, you know, a Power 4, maybe Power 5 ball, depending on how you want to play the hole. Um, there's a few different ways you can play this hole playing from the second tee. Um, you have the shot where you land right here and you're bouncing over. Um, bounce right there. Hopefully roll up into this zone right here. So you have that shot right there. You have another shot where you land right about here and you bounce up into this zone right here. Uh, depending on what kind of wind we have, this may be, this right here bait may be more of a shot if you're in the expert and you have like a double digit tailwind or a left or right tailwind. We'll just have to wait and see. Um, but if you do have that, you have a really high level like Apocalypse, maybe level five plus, um, you may have a chance to actually fly over the bunker here, land it about here, and get to the green on in one shot. Uh, we'll have to wait and see what kind of wind we have, but that is definitely a possibility, um, and we'll have to wait and see how that goes. You may have to land that shot a little bit farther back, maybe somewhere like right there. So it definitely could be one of those shots where there are a lot of risks, but maybe a huge payoff and reward if you can figure it out. So, uh, But like I said, that is a very wind-dependent shot. So I am going to actually erase that one. And we're going to talk about these other two shots. First, the one from the left-hand side. Uh, if you're playing the one from the left-hand side, um, on the drive you want to use plenty of topspin, at least five bars topspin, and I would say about two bars um, of left side spin. Um, using right side spin, um, you know, somewhere, be I don't know, I would say somewhere between two bars of left and two bars of right, somewhere in that median, medium, and that may depend on uh, what kind of win we get in the tournament. So if you have a left to right, you want, you want to use left spin. If you have right to left, we might want to use some right spin to straighten that shot out off the tee. Uh, thing is, we don't want to go into the rough on this uh, right side, though, for sure. So you want to make sure that you... Um, you cater your spin to whatever the wind is going to be, and that's going to keep you on that fairway. So for your second shot, you're looking at a long iron shot to the green. Um, this is another one of those bumpy greens. So what you're going to do is you're going to try to find the flattest spot you can on the green uh, and either try to uh, use backspin and roll it in, or you possibly go with a full um, backspin shot with your, uh, your long iron and try to uh, spin it back into the hole that way. Uh, so definitely my suggestion is get out there on the practice course, try to find that spot on the green that has the, the best, the truest bounce, and it's going to give you the best chance of hitting that perfect shot and putting it in the hole. So if we have some sort of crazy like headwind and we have to play it safe to the right side, uh, our second shot to the green is going to be a shot over those trees, uh, somewhere in that general vicinity, and probably using the Guardian. So uh, once we know the winds, if you know you got to take that shot to the right, I would definitely recommend packing the Guardian. Um, pack the Guardian anyway. Uh, it may it may end up you know being useful even for that left hand shot if you end up a little bit short of the the circular area that I said on the map. Uh, so you, either way, uh, the Guardian would work great on this hole um, on your second shot needing the backspin. All right, moving on hole number. Eight. We are almost done. Hole eight. Here we go. And hole eight is a par three. And it is a new par three. Um, I would definitely recommend going with the Quasar or Katana Ball. We're trying to stay low on power so we don't really find ourselves in between clubs here. Um, I would say go with the Sniper or the Guardian depending on how you want to play the hole. If you want to play your shot off the island here, uh, or possibly try the rough bump there, I would say the sniper. If you want to go with the guardian shot where you land a little bit closer to the hole with backspin, that's going to be where the guardian comes into play. So with the shot with the sniper um, off that kind of like that, that island green fairway area, um, if the tailwind, you want to use a couple bars of backspin. If you have a headwind, you're going to use about zero to one bar of topspin. Okay. And if you have a side wind, you probably don't need to use any spin at all. You just kind of want to use your, your right spin or your left spin to aim that shot as, as accurately as you can towards that hole. Hopefully you get the good bounce and you get the, uh, the ball to drop for the ace. Um, I think the rough bump shot is a very interesting shot. If we get some sort of a, a left, you know, some sort of a wind that's, that's facing it like an angle or something like that, 
you know, maybe something like that or like this or, you know, something where we can aim that shot along the edge of the rough. That may be a shot that we can think about uh, if we have a straight tailwind or a sidewind. That may be a little bit more riskier of a shot unless you want to use like a, a high uh, strength wind resistant ball and you just really want to knock down that wind to next to nothing. Then that rough bump would definitely be an option with the sniper, uh, especially a higher level sniper with top spin. Uh, definitely don't uh, completely take that one out of your mind. Keep that one in the back of your mind just in case it does come in handy. So that is hole number eight. Let's move on to hole number nine. This is the last and final hole. And it's a par five. And we may see the possibility of some uh, albatrosses here. Um, I would say definitely use a Kingmaker or a Titan once again. Whichever one you think is necessary for the type of shots that you want to take. Um, basically the, the few ways you can play this hole um, are to bounce your shot here and try to get up into this zone right here uh, or bounce it here and try to get up into this zone right here so those are your ways to play this shot right here uh, the right side shot is more of the safe shot the left side shot is more of the riskier shot but in my opinion opens you up to a better chance at that albatross attempt um, the, the wood club that you bring with you as well will be very dependent on the type of shot that you want to take. If you want to take your shot to the right, you need to make sure to bring your big dog or your cataclysm because you need um, a high power wood with a lot of curl because that second shot will be from here and it'll be curling it this way okay, to the hole. If you play to the left side, you can bring a shot like a, a wood like the sniper. Uh, accuracy and ball guide will be king for that second shot okay your ball will land somewhere in this zone right here and you can use that uh, that accuracy and that ball guide to spin that ball towards the hole uh, in my um, demo video that I put up of this hole playing from the first tee I had a shot uh, from that area with my sniper I came I came about a half a cup from sinking it for the albatross so definitely a possibility right there with that shot um, off the tee box, if you're going left, I would definitely say use, you know, something with full top spin. And you're going to want to judge your side spin depending on what kind of wind you have. Um, you do want to try to maintain that, that course, that straight shot. So if you have a right to left wind, you may want to use right spin. If you have a left to right wind, you might want to use some left spin. Uh, but you do want to use your full top spin and have a driver that has a lot of top spin for that shot. For the right, for the right side shot, it's more of a controlled shot. You just want to make sure you don't go into that bunker right here. Um, if you go into this bunker right here or right there, you're really going to be screwed for your second shot. You don't want to go into that rough either. Okay, So it's more of a controlled shot right there. Um, maybe something with a lot of accuracy and uh, a ball guide that will help you know exactly where you're going to put that shot. But remember, if you play to the right, you got to have a cataclysm or a big dog with a lot of curl, at least at least 50 curl, which anybody playing in the pro and the expert probably has those clubs leveled up to where you have enough curl anyway. So also 10% adjustment plus 10 plus 10% adjustment off this tee box. So we're going over water. All right, that is holes one through nine of the Ghost of the Glades course. Hopefully y'all have enjoyed this uh, this guide. Uh, sorry I seem like I'm half asleep. That's because I am. It, uh, it's fairly late here in Mississippi, and I'm about ready to go to bed. And I got to wake up in the morning to go work all day. But I did want to get this content out for you all before I went to work to, to tomorrow, because if I didn't right now, it would have been tomorrow night before I got to do this. So hopefully you all can take this information. You can get out and practice. Uh, tour 7 for pro and expert. Uh, tour 4 for rookie. Tour 11 for master. So good luck to you all. Um, if you haven't done so yet, please check me out on YouTube. Hit that subscribe button. You're already on my channel if you're watching this video. So just look down there at the bottom. Hit that subscribe button. If you really liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give it the thumbs down. That's okay with me. I do ask that you leave a comment uh, and let me know what it was about the video that you did not like. Um, or if you want, feel free to message me on Facebook at this name right here. And uh, you know, talk to me in private about what you think I need to do to improve the stream 
to uh, get you to a point where you do give me that thumbs up. So, um, you know, I do love constructive criticism, uh, you know, but I do like to know who it's coming from. And uh, I would appreciate that. If you haven't done so yet, check us out on Facebook at Golf Clash the 19th Hole. That's the community page that I run. Uh, 1,500 plus members strong, and we are a community that is there to help you all with your questions. And uh, we got lots of veteran players there that are willing to answer them. So uh, hope to see you all there. If you're already there, thank you for continuing to support me and my channel. We will see you all on Monday for a qualification. And uh, y'all have a good weekend. God bless.